All right, so just forgive the uh, the venue, but uh, I, I'm very limited with my time, and I still wanted to tell the story. But uh, she's uh, she's got some issues as far as uh, signaling that she needs to walk, and, it, and she really doesn't need to go to the bathroom. She just wants to uh, sniff around. But I, I digress. Um, for what you tuned for. So it was. God, I don't even remember what year. It was a year uh, we had a lot of flooding in, in North Jersey. It was November. Uh, there was an unseasonable uh, amount of rain, everything like that. So the Passaic River was uh, swelling at its banks. Um, and not, it wasn't over top of a Route 21, um, but it was you know encroaching into the towns and like different low-lying areas and everything like that. So it's 2 o'clock in the morning. I think it was like November 28th or 27th. I could probably find the date. Or the date's probably publicized for the accident and everything like that. So, um, it's two o'clock in the morning. I'm leaving, uh, the, uh, the, it used to be the Red Shingle, but it was called Wet. Uh, it is a, a gentleman's club, uh, nearby to my condo. Um, and I was doing some nightclub promoting and stuff. It's kind of after party stuff there. So I was like leaving there, but I needed cigarettes and they didn't sell cigarettes there. And, uh, it's also was kind of a rough place at the end of the night, you know, and there was, you know, the you know, people who have got murdered there before, you know, fights and everything. So I was like, okay, I'll go get serious. But there were very few places open, um, you know, in the area at that time. So there was a kind of a choice between going all the way into Newark uh, to one of the, you know, kind of uh, rougher, even more rough neighborhoods, or there was a, 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 a gas station that was open uh, over into Lyndhurst or Carney, you'd cross that, uh, the, the bridge there, uh, over the Passaic, it was up, so up Route 21 from there, so I take Route 21 over there, get to the gas station, get my cigarettes, kind of get out of there without getting, uh, accosted by all the, like, random vagrants and stuff like that, it was an all-night place or whatever, um, and then I'm heading back, and for whatever reason, I didn't take 21, uh, Route 21 back, I took, uh, the service road, which runs, um, you know, further inland from the river, but at a lower point, uh, a much lower point in, in, in certain areas, um, it looked like, it looked like a big puddle, and I was used to seeing puddles that night, um, you know, I, I wasn't, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't really, like, too concerned with how deep they were, I mean, my Scion TC is the original, you know, the original body style and everything like that, silver, um, you know, with the, I, but I had the, the bigger rims and the low profile tires. I hit the, what I thought was a puddle, immediately white water over the hood. And it, but the reason you could tell it was white and like it's been moving and everything like that is because it was so, so filthy. Um, and, uh, and, you know, because the sewage mains had, had, had backed up into it and, uh, and, uh, the river itself had kind of gone over its banks into, uh, I guess it would be, uh, maybe Rutherford or Belleville, you know, like the edge of Belleville, down, down towards the highway. And there's a, a warehouses there. Um, but there's also some really low lying ground. Like there's some dips in the road for whatever reason they're there. So what, what would, would normally have been like, you know, maybe a foot of water, or whatever like that, but it, it, it was lower there. So there's like five or six feet of water there. Uh, and the dirtiest, darkest, nastiest water you've ever seen. Um, so the, the water's coming over the hood. The car keeps moving down the hill in the, uh, in the, uh, you know, in the water or whatever like that. It's not like, it's not sinking. It's just rolling. You can't go in there, sweetheart. That's a construction area. They're not going to want you in there, sweetheart. They don't want you taking dumps where they work. Come on. Um, so what are you doing? Uh, so they, uh, so the, the cars, you know, kind of slowly sinking, you know, by my estimate, but it's actually rolling at this point. I had the window cracked, which was good. Uh, cause everything's electric in that car. I had the window crack cause I was smoking a cigarette, but I was like, just barely, uh, but you can't open the doors. Like when you, when you, when your car's going into something like that, there's too much pressure on the doors and, uh, all the electronics in the car immediately failed. I actually found myself like trying to restart the vehicle, you know, like, like, like a moron. What is going on with you, sweetheart? Uh, restart the vehicle, but then, uh, it, it was time to abandon ship. So, um, I, I managed to get the, the window jacked down, and then that was also when the water started pouring into the window, so we're, 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 we're sinking at this point. I get up onto the roof of the, the vehicle, um, which, you know, it, it wasn't like, it's not like it's like rapidly, rapidly sinking, um, but it was, uh, you know, it was going down, and I was able to get on the roof of it, but I'm, I'm losing, I'm losing uh, high ground, like, like the car is disappearing below me, and I got to make a choice, so I called 911. I told him I'd be in, uh, 
I, I, I'm, my vehicle's currently in the Passaic River, and uh, and I don't know what to do. And they said they had a boat, but it was evacuating senior citizens from a, a, a there was a retirement uh, kind of home or whatever like that. But they needed the boat to evacuate them. And I, basically, the the dispatcher said, "You're kind of on your own." I said, "Okay, I'm gonna make a swim for it." So I jumped from the top of the vehicle towards where I could see uh, land. It was, it, it was a parking lot, a warehouse parking lot. Uh, but I could see that there was asphalt there. It wasn't water, um, and it was it was it was where I could, you know, find respite or safety or whatever like that. So I jumped out of the water. It is frigid, and when you hit water like that, a lot of times you open your mouth. And I managed to swallow. It was definitely it was definitely poop in there. Uh, you know, the, the sewer mains were open. Like, I saw, like, stuff floating by. Um, so it hit the water, got some of my mouth and everything like that. But I was having trouble swimming. I was wearing pumas, like the, the real low, uh, real low soul pumas. They're kind of like a, like a fashionable, uh, fashionable, um, uh, you know, uh, sneakers or whatever like that. So I, I kicked them off. I was having to, you know, heavier clothes, whatever like that. Plus the shock of hitting that water and then swallowing whatever I swallowed. So I swam. It wasn't far. And I, I'm a pretty good swimmer. I was a lifeguard when I was a kid. Um, and I got to that asphalt. And it was it was like uh, it was like Columbus finding the new world. Or, or like uh, 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 Muslims going to going to Mecca. You're like, I was really happy to be there. So I get, get myself kind of together. The phone, which I was holding... You know, up trying to hold while I was swimming, you know, one hand or whatever. It, it had gotten wet, but it still had some, some, some life left in it. It was in a case of whatever. It was, it was starting to fail quickly. Like it, it was, I wasn't counting on it. But I got a call back from nine one one, and they were asking me my situation. I said, you know, I, I jumped from the vehicle. My vehicle's sinking in the Passaic, and and uh, and uh, that you know, I have to abandon the vehicle. I, I, I can't stay with it. If I'm breaking the law, I'm breaking the law. The guy advised me. He's like, okay, well, you know, where where are you now? And I'm like. I'm in this warehouse area, but there's like no way out, but going back in that water. I'm not going back in that water. I'm going to have to trespass on this warehouse property. It's like, you do what you got to do, but be careful back there. Uh, Cause there might be dogs or, or you know, like a uh, barbed wire. Whatever. It was, it was a 16 foot cyclone fence with razor wire at the top. So I still have my sweatshirt. I have no shoes at this point. The shoes are gone. The shoes are in the Passaic. My Pumas are gone. Um, just so we're clear, kind of, so I'm in, uh, 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 a zoo York's, uh, sweatshirt, like a kind of a, like a fashion, like the little, remember the little zip up sweatshirts that were kind of small on you didn't, didn't hang down too low or whatever like that. You know, it was kind of before skinny jeans were like skinny sweatshirts or whatever, whatever. So I had that. I was like, okay, I'm pretty experienced, not as a burglar, but you know, like getting around a barbed wire, razor wire, that kind of thing. I, I'd be around barbed wire. Razor wire is a different story. And this wasn't like. You know, like uh, 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 half ass and razor wire. This was like, like San Quentin razor wire, or like, or like Nazi Germany razor wire. Um, I threw my sweatshirt over at the top, and that, granted, I'm, I'm 16 feet up in the air. Uh, it, it, the sweatshirt wasn't uh, big enough to really go over, and, it, and plus, once it was on there, it was stuck. So I decided to like try to make my motion over that. I got cut up bad, uh, all down the front of my body and everything like that. And plus, I'm I'm covered in shit and 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 uh, sewage and uh, and uh, broken dreams, you know, whatever was in that river. Um, so I'm caught up and everything like that. And then I, my going over, uh, I managed to get, I uh, slice, rip some of the, 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 the razor wire barbs out, uh, you know, like where, where it's hooked kind of, uh, on my front. And then, but my sock got caught as it went over the, the top and I kind of grabbed the fence and kind of did a really, really sloppy dismount. Uh, but then one sock gets, gets pulled all the way out, but I can't, I can't get it back on. Cause I'm also cut on the foot and, and plus I don't want to mess with it. Like it, like everything's all wet and like, I, I'm trying to make it, uh, you know, away from that, that, uh, enclosed where I can't get help. So where I end up is behind where it was a path mark. It's a different grocery store now, but at this point it had been shut down. So in the, for whatever reason, in some point during the path marks career or path marks, uh, tenure there, uh, they had taken all the metal, uh, uh, shopping carts and just dumped them into the woods and big, you know, where they put them in, in, in lines and they snapped together and dumped them and then piled them up and everything like that. And that was sitting in the, in the back woods around the, 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 the edge of the parking lot there. So I had to climb over that. Like that was the next obstacle. And it was, it was like a shifting, like just everything trying to pinch you, everything like that. 
And then that's when I like broke the finger and then like, I, I was just done. I was, I, but I had made it to the old path marks, you know, abandoned path, path marks parking lot. So I'm right by uh, Washington Ave in Belleville. And I know people in Belleville and I know people who stay up late in Belleville because I'm doing, uh, I'm doing uh, nightclub promotions, uh, hookahs, that kind of thing. You know, so I, I know the, the, the night community. So I might see somebody who might stop for me. Uh, the, the phone is, is done at this point. So I'm, I'm out on Washington Avenue and I'm start walking up, up, the, up, up, the, uh, up towards, heading towards where would be the condo, would be home. Um, and that's, uh, you know, probably a mile or two away, but I'm in no condition to make this walk. I've got no shoes. My sock is pulled out. I'm cut all to hell and I'm, I'm suffering from, uh, the ingestion of sewage, raw sewage and, and the cold and everything like that. So I'm kind of like at the end of my road, like, I, I want to give up, like, I'm looking for somebody to come save me. Like, it, it, you know, like I know how those women feel like, they're, they're like, like, Oh, I, I, I'm single mother. If I'm still hot, come save me. I was looking for that. I didn't care. So it was a little bit, like a couple minutes, uh, I don't know, my sense of time is, is, is uh, skewed from that. It might have been a half hour, but whatever, it might have been five minutes. But I see high beams come on at the, at the traffic coming towards me. Real bright, like really nice headlights. You know, like a, like a new car at the time, it, like, it had really nice, uh, uh, I don't know, high HID headlights or whatever like that. And the brights go on and they don't go off. And then the guy's, slow, and the guy's slowing down, so I'm like... What the hell is it? Maybe it's the cops. Maybe they'll, they'll they'll take me home, or like maybe they're looking for me, or whatever like that. It's my buddy Jose. Uh, Jose's not with us anymore. He ended up uh, he got he got mixed up in some cocaine, and he uh, he did he got uh, sentenced to some federal time, and then he got uh, he made enemies inside, and, and, and uh, you know, it was tragic. It, 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 uh, but this has not transpired yet. This is. He's just a decent dude. Uh, uh, he partied a lot, and he was kind of in and around the same circles I was, but you know, more of like a customer kind of thing. He uh, he rolls down the window. I'm not sure who it is them, and I almost didn't recognize him because uh, my glasses are, are gone at this point. I lost the glasses in, in the river. I said, "Oh, McLovin." That's what they call me, McLovin, or or El Blanco, or uh, Harry Potter, or whatever like that. That was just how I was known in the area. I'm like, "Oh, okay, I know this guy." He's like, "What the hell happened to you?" I'm like, I lost my car into the river. He's like, oh, that sucks. And I can tell at this point, this guy's kind of, kind of, uh, um, juiced up. Like he, he's, he, he's been, uh, he's been, uh, he's been, uh, on a training diet for the evening. You know, like it's, it's, he's, he's going both directions and everything like that. So I said, I told, he said, well, what, what are you going to do? And I'm like, I'm trying to get home. He's like, you don't live that far from me. I'm like, yeah, right by wet. And he's like, oh, I'm right. right. You know, so, and he's like, it sucks. I got my wife's brand new Lexus. And, and that's what it was, it was white on white on white. Like, like everything was white on this car. I'm not sure if it was brand new, might've been new used, whatever, but it was like, everything was with it. Carpet, uh, interior, leather. It, it, and if it, if it, if it doesn't come from the factory like that, uh, they had it done custom or maybe I'm just, it was hallucinating. It was just a very clean white car. And, and let me like, like just paint the picture again. So covered in sewage, cut up and bleeding all down the front, no shoes. Uh, the sock, um, broken finger, like bleeding, uh, and and then also uh, looking kind of sick, like I'm gonna throw up. He's he looks at me, he goes, you know what? I got the plastic from the seats from the the dealership, or whatever. Like I guess the plastic would go, normally go over the seats. Um, it's in the trunk. I'm like, okay. He pops the trunk. I, I walk over there with him because I'm kind of like dazed, and I just kind of want to stay with him because I want to make sure he doesn't leave me. And, and I'm, I, you know, if he's gonna put the seat covers back on, and I'll try to like, you know, tuck it back or whatever, and not drip on him. So he he, he goes in the trunk. He's manipulating this these uh, large. They almost look like like mattress bags or body bags. You know, clear. Um, Plastic around the trunk. He's like, okay, now we're good. I'm like, you want me to get in the uh, the, the the without putting the, the the plastic on the seats? He's like, he's like, no, my friend. You are going to ride in the trunk. Okay. Like, you know what? Beggars can't be choosers. And I would never willingly get in the trunk of somebody's car, you know, like in that situation and get in like a plastic bag. But I was at that point, you know, and, and I, was, I needed a hero. And, and this unlikely gentleman became my hero for the night. And that was, that trunk was warm. I almost fell asleep in there. So he gets, he gets up to, towards my house there in, in, in Belvoza on Clinton street, uh, the Kristen arms, uh, I had a, like a third floor condo walk up, but it was, it was real, real quiet and private and everything like that. And I liked it. And it was, you know, decent. He owned it or whatever. And, uh, he pops the trunk 
And the thing is, is like, there's a decent amount of people from my condominium complex out. I, I don't know, whatever, maybe somebody was having a party and, you know, multiple units were going back and forth, whatever. But they were out in front, like, smoking cigarettes and, like, drinking and shit like that or whatever. And, and he pulls up, he pops the trunk, and, like, I, I, I yell to him, like, I'm going to have trouble getting out. So he comes out, gets me, like, I'm, I'm hurt at this point, pulls me from the, the trunk, in, like, kind of wrapped up in the plastic bag. And kind of like cleans me up, like like wipes my face a little bit with his hand. It was it was like your grandmother, you know, like licks her thumb and, and just, he did that. And, and he's like, okay, I'll see you tomorrow. I'm like, okay, cool, thank you, thank you so much. Like like a, you're the you're the man. And everybody's looking. And they're like, what the fuck just transpired? And so I make it into the house. I'm doing minor first aid. I mean, that's when I realized I lost the wallet. Uh, so I managed to get a burner phone put back together with my SIM card. You change them at the time. I had other burners. I, I, uh, call, uh, I, get, I think I get a call back from the town and I one, but the town wants to know wh- where I'm at. Cause they thought they were, they were doing a, they were looking for a body. Uh, they, they already started looking for my corpse, you know, and they found, they'd seen the vehicle cause for whatever reason the hazard stayed on or something, something was lit in the car and they could see it through the water. Uh, they proceeded to rescue the vehicle in the most expensive tow you, I, I think New Jersey has ever seen. Uh, it was environmental costs. There was, uh, you know, the guy had to go out like, like, and hook it up with a, like scuba gear. I don't know. Uh, they pulled it from the, pulled it from the river. Um, and then they were looking for my body. And then I, I was like, no, no, I'm okay. And they're like, they they said, you know, we need you to come down to city hall, you know, town hall or whatever like that. And, and, uh, and, and start working through this with us. I'm like, okay, I, get, I walk down there. I got new, sh- I got not new shoes. I got my older shoes on older Pumas. And I, and I get down there, I talk to the desk sergeant. He's like, Oh, you gave us a scare. We, we thought you were dead. And, uh, and I was like, Oh, thanks. You know, I understand the senior citizens were more important. He was like, no, nah, they didn't even go there. Like he was like, he, was, he, he couldn't account for the, the, the location of the boat or why they said that. I said, okay, well, every, all things being equal, we're good. And I said, I can't prove my identity. I lost everything. The, I think the chief of police and the mayor of Belleville stepped in at that point. And they, I was talking to the desk sergeant and the desk sergeant was like, yo, can we work with him? Cause he's got no ID and he's got no money and everything kind of got jammed up and the cars in impound and, 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 and there's fish in it and everything. Like that. The mayor's like, go ahead and waive the release fee. And then, you know, kind of push him through without a license and everything. Like that. And he hugged me, he hugged me. And I still had a kind of an odor, which I, that made me respect him. I didn't vote for him. I didn't, I didn't vote in Belleville at all. Um, he, I still kind of had a, uh, an aroma. Well, let's just call it that uh, river road or whatever. Uh, hugged me. And then the, the, uh, impound lot, he gave me, they gave me some forms and I'm thinking, I'm going to go ahead and get, the, get this car out right now or, or get it like sorted out and not have to pay too much. They waived a $14 town fee. When I got to the impound lot, it was thousands of dollars. Like I, I was just like, Oh, I could just leave the car and you guys just keep it. And they're like, they're like, uh, no, no, this, this is, it just keeps going up every day. Like I, I was just ready to like, let them keep the car. No, there was, there was uh, other costs there. It was like, okay, cool. So get the car back, everything like that. And then the, the insurance company won't total out. That thing stank of fish. Brown smoke came out of it, but it, all in all, I made it. It just ruined, you know, perfectly fine. Scion TC.